Hey guys, so it is mid-spring and uh, I'm doing a lot more climbing now. Mountaineering season's coming up and so I figured I'd do a couple videos on some rope management type things. Uh, this one's going to be about kiwi coils. And so there's a lot of different reasons you would want a kiwi coil. Obviously as guides uh, we tend to use kiwi coiling a lot to shorten up the rope between us and our client or clients um, in order to provide some safety for them through uh, less technical terrain as well as also to get from point A to point B a bit faster uh, but this type of kiwi coiling that I'm going to show you would actually be useful for recreational groups so that way it would make uh, transitioning from uh, fifth pitch or fifth class rock climbing to walking and then fifth class rock climbing a bit faster instead of stopping and untying from both ends and then coiling up the rope into some sort of backpack or whatever you can easily just throw this on your shoulders uh, when you're walking from, you know, the third pitch to the fourth pitch, which involves a large ledge that you have to walk from point A to point B, and you don't want to just pick up the rope and move it from that, or, you know, carry it in your hands. Maybe you have to actually use your hands to get through some scrambling terrain uh, before uh, getting to the next fifth class pitch. So uh, take that with a grain of salt, and I'm going to show you how I specifically do it. Uh, everyone seems to do it a different way, but this is the way that works best for me. All right, so I have my harness on. Uh, first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to tie into the rope. And you can tie in with whatever knot you like the most. I got my figure eight follow through. All right, there you go, so now I'm tied in. Okay, so once you're tied in, some people like to put the rope over their neck like this before doing the kiwi coils. Me personally, I like actually passing it around my back and then doing my kiwi coils. What I'm going to do now is hold my left hand around my belly button, maybe a bit lower, like my belay loop, anywhere from here to here. It's a nice range. And I'm going to throw these over my neck and just collect them in my hands like this. It does take a little bit of practice to uh, get your groove in this. Okay, so now I have the majority of the rope coiled around my neck uh, with my hand here. I have about 20 feet between me and my uh, partner or my client. And now I'm going to tie off these coils so that way I don't have to uh, keep holding them in my hand and they won't get tangled around my neck. So first thing I'm gonna do is take my left arm and pass the coils through. If you wanna pass it through your right arm, that's perfectly fine. It's uh, whichever side you like them to be on. Then I'm going to take the rope, trailing off the end. Oh, also um, this strap, sometimes this can be kind of loose. Like if I do that, you can see how this strap is a little loose. All you have to do is just turn the whole coil around your body until that's nice and tight. So that's one of the pitfalls, you can watch out for that. Now I'm going to take my rope and either you pass it through your belay loop, you can pass it through your belay loop and your knot loop if you want, it doesn't really matter. Pull out a decent amount and then take this end and stick it up through the coils. But make sure you capture that first one. Up through the first one, up through the rest of them. Pull a decent amount of rope through. Then take the other end you had. And now I'm going to tie an overhand on a bite around that end of the rope. Yep, and then I'll finish this off by just tightening everything down. So these coils do sit a little high. I tend to make mine a little high. You can have them lower if you want, but uh, that's how you tie off the kiwi coils. And now I'm free to move around with my hands to get past my third class whatever or fourth class whatever. If uh, my partner's catching up to me I can always just start coiling up rope in my hands so that way uh, it stays off the ground you'll notice how all the rope is off the ground it's not getting dirty it's not getting particles shoved into it and it's in a nice tight package for me to actually climb with I've climbed with kiwi coils on myself plenty of times before and um, if you actually are planning on doing vertical climbing one thing that's nice to do is take this loop and take the rope 
And you can do a little half twist right here, just like that. Notice which way I'm twisting that. Half twist, and then put it onto the loop. So that way it helps tighten down this knot a bit more. It's a little half hitch. And then you would also have to take, oh, uh, I got one somewhere. Take a locking carabiner and then throw a clove hitch on your belay loop. Yeah, clove hitch on your belay loop. So that way, if you do fall or want to sit on this, all the weight's on your belay loop and not on your shoulders. But for a lot of short pitching and single pitching, we will elect just to go off the knot right here and not do the clove hitch. When you're undoing kiwi coils, you have to actually take the time and take each uh, loop off separately. If I just were to throw this on the ground, then it would get in a big tangled mess and it'll take forever to actually undo it. So watch out for that. Anyone who's actually dealt with kiwi coils uh, before has had that burned into their memory when they've tried to just throw the entire loop on the ground and get into a big tangled mess. So you do have to take your time and take each rope off one by one. Actually it doesn't take too much time and then this way your rope is perfectly stacked ready for you to lead off with uh, your end on top. Or you could easily flip it around and uh, start undoing the other end and put that on bottom if your partner is going to lead the next pitch. So there's actually a lot of versatility in that setup. Either way you uncoil it all the way down to your knot and then you're ready to head off and climb again.